of the evening ladies and gentlemen on behalf of the agriculture and engineering sectional committee of the ISL I warmly welcome you all for today's guest lecture on uh, groundwater pollution and LNAPM first of all let me introduce you the distinguished speaker engineer Dr. Anil Vaduvi he obtained his Bachelor of the Science of Engineering degree with honors from the Faculty of Engineering of the University of Peradeniya. After that, he joined the prestigious Cambridge University in England for his PhD in Sosone Remediation by A.R. Aspaji. After completing PhD also, he worked as a technical specialist in Environment Agency of England. Then he joined Arcadis UK Limited as an in situ remediation discipline lead. Later he joined the Royal Group in UK as a principal scientist and working there to date. He has more than 15 years experience in soil and groundwater remediation and also he is a well recognized technical expert for contaminated land management in the UK. In this capacity he has extensive track records for designing and delivering innovative yet pragmatic cutting edge physical, biological and chemical remediation solutions. So, I cordially invite him to deliver his valuable presentation on groundwater remediation and LNAPL. Hi everyone, uh, thank you very much for the uh, nice and kind words uh, from Mr. Engineer Balasurya and also uh, Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Engineer Mr. Telagaratna, for uh, inviting me to give this presentation today. Uh, I'm going to talk you about the Tornado uh, Pollution and uh, NAPA, the Light Non Active Space Liquid. Uh, I'm not going to uh, go into the uh, very detail into these uh, topics, but uh, just sort of like uh, giving an introductory type of presentation to raise the uh, awareness of the uh, subject matters. Uh, well, he gave the uh, nice introduction, but uh, just let me uh, briefly uh, introduce myself. Uh, as Mr. Balsuri said, graduated from the uh, Faculty of Engineering, University of Peradeniya, and then went to the uh, University of Cambridge to do my PhD. Uh, my research uh, focused on the uh, source on remediation by uh, studying, which involved the uh, uh, more uh, numerical and physical modeling uh, to investigate the uh, contaminant rate and transport, uh, mass. Transfer, uh, national efficiency, uh, trade limited behavior, uh, and then finally uh, to derive uh, an empirical correlations for uh, mass transfer coefficients from NAPA to gaseous space and NAPA to aqueous space. So once I finished my PhD, I joined the Arcadis UK Limited. Uh, Arcadis is one of the uh, uh, biggest uh, environmental uh, consultants firm. Worked there for 12 years uh, as a principal consultant and is doing the discipline day. And also served as a subject matter expert for uh, several dis uh, different uh, disciplines like elemental remediation, hydraulic, biotic, and abiotic enhanced reductive decoordination, and as Spargin. Also, sort of uh, serve as a uh, Arcadis Europe and UK technical expert for test testing. Then I joined the Environment Agency in England. So, Environment Agency is the uh, governing body uh, uh, for environmental matters. Uh, and my department was uh, responsible for safeguarding water resources. My, uh, my role sort of uh, involved uh, providing uh, uh, technical.
uh, <coughs> uh, providing the uh, uh, technical advice to the uh, planning applicants and local authorities on redevelopment of contaminated <coughs> land. And then uh, recently I joined the uh, uh, the Ro group uh, as a principal scientist. Uh, Ro is the uh, leading uh, uh, pollution uh, response and remediation company in the UK and Ireland. Also, they are collaborating with China. Uh, I'm serving as a, a national technical lead uh, to provide the uh, uh, technical solutions for uh, uh, pollution incidents and the uh, 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 remediation problems. So, coming back to the uh, Presentations. This is my agenda. So, uh, I'm going to briefly talk about the importance of groundwater and then the groundwater pollution, groundwater protection, and then apple, and apple partial distribution, and apple rendition. And depending on the time, we probably can uh, uh, discuss or go through a couple of uh, case studies. <coughs> so, where did groundwater come from? Now, this is the uh, Water cycle or uh, a geological cycle. This shows the, uh, the continuous movement of uh, water in the air uh, on the surface and uh, below the ground. So as you can see, uh, as you can see, you can see the groundwater uh, mainly uh, uh, more, uh, coming from the uh, precipitations. Uh, it could be rain or snow or hail or whatever sleep or something like that. And uh, one fifth to uh, one third of the precipitation typically goes down to the uh, uh, to recharge the uh, groundwater. Uh, and the other thing is probably as this uh, sort of like an integrated uh, sort of integrated system or cycle. Uh, if there's a contamination in one place, it could end up in uh, in other different places. So the basic sort of six, uh, simple simple definition of groundwater is uh, water present or <coughs> below the uh, with a water table in rocks or other geological strata. Uh, the water bearing units or uh, water bearing uh, rocks or the geological strata like sand or gravel uh, are called uh, aquifers, and mainly there are two types of uh, aquifers unconfined uh, and the confined aquifers. So, uh, in unconfined aquifers, the water table is uh, open to the atmosphere through, uh, uh, through permeable uh, overlying materials. In contrast, confined aquifers is all led by uh, low permeable uh, materials. So I'm not going to sort of talk about these things, but uh, groundwater flows through these uh, aquifers, and uh, the gravity is the main force behind the groundwater flow. So if you are if you are interested, or if you are going to do uh, do work with the uh, contaminated land or groundwater pollution or or in situ remediations, you have to uh, understand the. Uh, uh, what uh, uh, like or ground flow mechanisms to these uh, aquifers? <coughs> uh, importance of groundwater. So when we are talking about the groundwater, uh, we have to consider both the uh, groundwater quantity and also the quality. So they both are equally uh, equally important. Uh, if you have a good quality groundwater but uh, not good uh, enough quantity, then we have a problem. Similarly, <coughs> if we have a uh, uh, enough quantity, but bad quality groundwater, then we, again we have, a, we have a problem. So, if you are thinking about the protection of groundwater or water resources management, uh, we have to uh, we have to pay the attention for this uh, both uh, 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 groundwater uh, quality and quantities. So, the groundwater is most important and the uh, or the largest source for uh, fresh water in the world, and it's uh, make up nearly thirty percent of all the world's uh, fresh water. So groundwater supplies uh, drinking water to approximately two million, uh, two billion uh, people uh, in the world. Seventy percent of uh, groundwater extracted uh, worldwide are used for agriculture, and four percent of the uh, world's uh, irrigated areas use uh, groundwater. So you can see with these facts uh, how uh, how important groundwater is. Probably this is exactly similar in Sri Lanka. Uh, 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 particularly in the dry zones, uh, <coughs> the groundwater is the main uh, drinking water source. And also, uh, probably you have seen this type of uh, this type of well, sort of called I think agricultural well or uh, similar uh, water wells, uh, uh, Farmers in uh, dry zones uh, uh, are using this type of well to uh, 
abstract the water for the for the alcohols. Uh, so, the uh, for the drinking purpose, drinking water purpose, and for agriculture purpose, the groundnut is very very important. Uh, so we have to manage, we have to uh, protect it uh, uh, for uh, future future years. In addition to those, uh, in addition to those, the groundnut play another uh, sort of vital role. So it provides the water to uh, lake river or wetlands to maintain the uh, maintain the uh, ecosystem. <coughs> This is a sort of a sustainable uh, groundwater abstraction. This is a map of the uh, sustainable groundwater abstraction. And uh, considering the, uh, uh, the water flow required to sustain the groundwater, uh, sustain the uh, ecosystem, and also considering the annual recharge, uh, scientists has uh, our estimated the amount of groundwater that can be abstracted without any uh, sort of discriminatory uh, effect on the water uh, table. So, as you can see uh, here, most of the countries in the world, including Sri Lanka, uh, can only uh, sort of uh, abstract approximately about 150 million cube meters of uh, government panel. So that is probably good enough, uh, depending on the uh, on the, uh, the usage or the demand. Uh, if you abstract more uh, than that, uh, <coughs> it could uh, result in uh, falling government table uh, and. Um, uh, um, deteriorating the groundwater quality, uh, environmental degradations, uh, and also um, uh, maybe uh, lower crop uh, yield uh, and uh, uh, rising the uh, farming costs, uh, and also significant risk on the uh, 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 future global uh, food productions. This is the sort of uh, map of uh, the global groundwater abstraction has presented to annual recharge. As you can see here, uh, Sri Lanka is, we, in Sri Lanka we are extracting something about uh, 2 to 20 percent of our annual recharge. Probably not bad, that's, that's good. Uh, but uh, countries like the North Africa or Middle East or India, as you can see, they are in sort of like a uh, danger zones. Uh, and also considering the, uh, uh, the future uh, demand due to the uh, population growth and also the effects of climate change. And you can probably imagine uh, how critical uh, or how valuable and important the groundwater will be in the, in the future, particularly in countries like, countries like this. <coughs> so the uh, <coughs> pollution, so like, like I said, if you are if you are interested about the what is groundwater resource management, you have to you have to consider both the quantities and the quality. But this presentation is mainly focusing to the groundwater uh, quality sites. Uh, so the groundwater quality will go down due to the groundwater pollution. Uh, uh, the groundwater pollution is uh, uh, is difficult to uh, uh, detect and also it's difficult to rectify. So if it gets polluted. Uh, then it will take ages, uh, or like uh, to bring it to the back to the ocean condition, it will be uh, a little bit uh, tough, tougher. So, just to give us sort of like an idea or like a flavor of this uh, 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 pollution or uh, quality, this is this is the uh, global uh, uh, sort of pesticides map. It shows the uh, uh, large areas with uh, high water pollution risk. It's about 40 percent of the uh, earth's lands are at uh, risk of pollution from uh, pesticides. As you can see, Sri Lanka is probably medium to high this uh, high risk uh, category. So this is about the nitrate, and this uh, map uh, this is the map of a uh, global map, map uh, with the uh, presence of zones with uh, high nitrate in uh, down order. So it uh, shows the uh, the aggregated uh, data per country. Classified from uh, non few and uh, many zones, uh, high concentration of nitrate have, have been reported. As you can see, uh, uh, Sri Lanka has uh, many uh, uh, zones with uh, high nitrate uh, concentrations, uh, which probably require the uh, attention or uh, corrective measures to bring the uh, water quality back to the uh, optimal conditions. 
So probably this may be due to the extra use of uh, fertilizers. Right, the pollution is uh, due to the uh, uh, peripheral action the release of uh, substance into the downward or into the ground, uh, during, uh, mainly during the uh, uh, human activities. Uh, there may be some sort of uh, uh, natural uh, activities, but it's not important because the nature probably can uh, uh, get to a buffer of those, those, those sort of issues. Mainly it's due to the uh, human activities, activities like uh, uh, discharge of waste and wastewater down to into the ground or due to the, uh, uh, due to the uh, leak, leak or uh, release uh, due to poor storage of solvent or petrol in the carbons, uh, can sort of uh, contaminate or pollute, uh, pollute the uh, groundwater. Uh, the common groundwater pollutants are uh, usually like uh, ammonia and the carbons, which are uh, solvents and such and stuff. <coughs> uh, the, uh, the risk presented by pollutant is depend on uh, its, uh, its use uh, and also uh, how it's entering the groundwater and uh, the degree of harm it can cause and also its persistence. Uh, well, we have to remember that anyway, like anything can be a toxic or anything can be a pollu uh, pollution, uh, pollutant uh, uh, if we uh, release into the ground more than uh, it should be. So uh, this was the uh, sort of uh, uh, civil uh, pollutant source uh, in uh, rural and uh, urban environments. Uh, <coughs> the <coughs> the leak, uh, the localized uh, leak or uh, uh, release or discharge uh, at a single point or, uh, uh, or a small area, the uh, waste like this uh, solar release from manufacturing facilities or hydrocarbon release from um, uh, petrol finish stations are called uh, point source solution, uh, point source uh, pollution. Probably they are they are common in uh, urban environment, uh, but uh, in contrast in rural environment, so this type of uh, pollutions like uh, it could be due to the, uh, the leachate uh, of uh, farmland or due to the or, or leachate from the uh, excessive uh, <coughs> use of fertilizers can create sort of like a uh, pollutions like uh, spread uh, 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 over large areas or long, long period. So this type of uh, pollution called uh, diffuse source pollution. Uh, and also you have, you have to remember that the combination of uh, uh, point source solutions can also uh, create uh, 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 diffuse uh, pollutions. Due to the nature of uh, the distribution of this uh, uh, if it's pollution, uh, it is very difficult to uh, <coughs> difficult to detect, uh, and also uh, difficult to uh, uh, remediate. So probably uh, uh, promoting the uh, the best practice or the adopting the best practice is probably the best approach to manage the uh, diffusion uh, diffusion terms, uh, diffuse star uh, pollutions. <coughs> So groundwater productions, uh, how we can uh, manage the uh, groundwater. So this is, uh, I, I, to be honest, don't know uh, what we are doing in Sri Lanka. Uh, but uh, the first part of it, we should aim to uh, prevent the uh, damage to the environment or to the groundwater, uh, rather than having uh, restored uh, lake. Uh, and uh, in my point of view, looking at what we are doing in uh, England, uh, I think, uh, uh, what we have to do is like we have to uh, focus on three three things. Uh, one is legislation and question statement. Uh, the other one, ground principles, and uh, the third one is technical information. So if we can uh, create a sort of a, 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 a safe system, uh, integrate these three three things, uh, probably we can uh, uh, we can uh, uh, protect our groundwater. Uh, so sort of minimize the uh, potential uh, damage to the uh, groundwater. So basically, what is uh, what I mean by these things is like uh, we should need a sort of like a clear uh, the go uh, government approach to the implementation of government policies for groundwater. Uh, also, legislation should act as a framework for different uh, activities which have uh, direct impact on groundwater. So. 
if there is no government or such like a government approach to protect the groundwater, then it's very difficult. We don't know what exactly they need or what we have to do. It. And uh, the difference between the legislation and post statement is sometimes legislation is difficult to understand. The wording and things like that, maybe some sort of like a legal terms and things like so maybe like one people like us uh, maybe difficult to understand. Therefore, question statement is just to sort of simplify version of the legislation. So that's explained uh, with a very simple language uh, to understand uh, uh, what we have to do uh, in, uh, in these sort of activities. The next one we probably need is the government principles. That is basically a, uh, uh, we have introduced the basic science of groundwater and the issues that need government and mission to protect it. So basically, basically government principles like how the water flow and uh, what's the contaminant uh, transfer and uh, what's the contaminant distribution and when the contaminants come to the government or what, what, what sort of risk we have uh, or what sort of concern we have uh, and then uh, how, do we have to, uh, how do we have to control them or protect them <coughs> and also when we are talking about some activities like they are dangerous probably for the groundwater but there is potential uh, risk but we have to uh, sort of uh, install them, or like uh, we have to do that, uh, do those sort of activities. So if we have that sort of things, then we should have a sort of like a clear uh, uh, advice on managing the possible uh, 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 to minimize the uh, possible uh, uh, risk to the groundwater, and also we should have implement a monitoring system to recognize whether there is any any problem. So if we have a a good monitoring system. As soon as the problem is start, we can diagnose, and then we quickly we can quickly address that problem rather than waiting uh, for a long time and uh, rather than trying to address it when the problem becomes The last bit is technical <coughs> information. So when we know the law or legislations, <coughs> and when we have the sort of uh, uh, basic uh, understanding of science, then we have to we should be able to. Uh, uh, able to uh, uh, assess or like estimate the associated risk. So in order to do that, we need to uh, sort of a lot of different informations <coughs> in a with our conceptual site model, and then we have understand potential concerns and drivers, and uh, then uh, we have to think about what sort of uh, remedies or corrective actions we have to we have to do it. Uh, and uh, under this, then we can create some uh, sort of. Uh, 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 good practice or so best practice methods and also safer operating <coughs> procedures <coughs> in order to, uh, in order to uh, sort of uh, uh, protect or like uh, maintain the government. So very briefly, uh, with, this, uh, with this sort of like a, a safe system, we should have a clear and accurate interpretation and implementation of law. And then the next one is understanding of the fundamental science of groundwater and also groundwater pollution. The last one is the necessary information, skill knowledge, the expert protection strategies in line with the legislative uh, frameworks. So I think that is uh, that is very important. I think you can create a, uh, create a safe system, including this thing, we can protect our groundwater, otherwise, it will be uh, virtually impossible to uh, uh, maintain the groundwater quality. I think like uh, you guys, uh, like uh, engineers in the country, so have a, have a big, uh, uh, big responsibility to get the message out and do whatever necessary or whatever you can uh, to protect the groundwater uh, in the country for the future, for future generations. <coughs> and well, ultimately, it's uh, it's a duty and responsibility of uh, every single person in the country to protect the groundwater. Otherwise, it will be a it will be a big big problem. Uh, uh, in, the, in, in the future. So this is uh, uh, this is about the uh, groundwater uh, sort of site, and uh, uh, let's move into the uh, El Napels. So what's that uh, word stand is for light non aqueous based liquid or El Napel? The reason I pick this subject is uh, this is actually sort of a relatively new discipline. Maybe 20 years, 25 years, maybe. Uh, and also, it's very dynamic and it's deep uh, in the world. A lot of uh, research is created, and also a lot of methods is coming, assessment tools, and uh, renovation techniques, uh, site assessment. There's so many different things uh, coming very, 
keep changing and uh, coming, coming every day. So you have to keep the track if you want to sort of, if you're interested about the NFL side. And also uh, in Sri Lanka, we have a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, hydrocarbon issues, like what we have seen a lot of later on the fibers or spills, uh, and uh, some sort of like a sheen in the drinking waterways. Uh, and uh, sometimes, you know, uh, if you look at the old uh, petrol stations, the nearly <coughs> surface is very dark black, uh, then you can assume how good the practice is, that sort of thing. So, because of that, I thought uh, this will give some sort of like a Basic understanding of uh, NAPAL and also uh, potential uh, risk or concerns associated with them. <coughs> so, NAPAL, non aqueous space liquid, is a, a hydrophobic liquid, organic chemicals that are immiscible with uh, water. If they are lighter than water, then they are called uh, L NAPAL. If they are denser than water, heavier than water, then they are called D NAPAL. Uh, Today we are going to focus on the uh, n uh, like this sort of showing uh, what, what's happened if you put the uh, n apple into a sort of like a water bottle or water beaker, uh, as it is immiscible, it's not going to mix up with the water and it's uh, sort of stays a separate, separate phase on the top of water as it's like the normal. The most common type of uh, uh, n apples are fuels and oils such as uh, petrol, diesel, uh, oils and kerosene. <coughs> and NAPAL is uh, one of the most frequently encountered organic uh, contaminants in the subsurface. I think it is very uh, obvious because we have thousands of uh, uh, stations, so those things can sort of uh, potentially uh, cause some uh, 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 problems to them. Also, there are several different uh, uh, NAPAL uh, release mechanisms in the ground, uh, but most common things are accidental leakage from ASP. ASP is uh, above, uh, above ground storage tanks, and the USP is. Uh, underground display tanks, and then the uh, <coughs> accident release from during handling storage or transfer of uh, uh, oil or uh, uh, chemicals. Uh, this this figure here showing uh, the difference between the uh, contaminant distribution <coughs> of NFL and DNFL. Like uh, upon release, the contaminants are coming down to the uh, through the uncirculated soil, and when it's hit the groundwater, the NFL is start to spread around the water table. It's not go down into the uh, saturated soil. But uh, in contrast, uh, in Dean Apple, when you hit the ground water, uh, water table, uh, it's continue to uh, go down into the saturated soil uh, as it is heavier than water, uh, heavy than water uh, with some uh, lateral, uh, uh, lateral spread or lateral uh, spreading uh, uh, as shown in this picture. The distribution or the uh, lateral spreading is uh, sort of controlled by the uh, subsurface heterogeneity. Uh, and uh, it's may be very, very complex. As a result of that, the detecting uh, the apple and also remediating them is extremely difficult uh, uh, compared to the compared to apples. So why do we have to uh, manage the uh, N apple? So why do you have to treat them or manage them or remediate? So basically, N apple can give us uh, several different uh, concerns or health problems. I know so it can uh, it can act as a continuous source. The the attenuation of the NFL is very low, so because of that, a NAPL can uh, pass its prolonged period uh, below the ground uh, uh, while acting as a continuous source. And then uh, uh, also, like if you look at the how this comes to our body. Snapple directly going to the uh, migrate into the central waters and also the, uh, it can come in contact with the uh, bodies. <coughs> also, it can create some uh, uh, web intrusion issues uh, and some snapple can dissolve and migrate into our drinking wells as well. So, so like that, in general, um, very simply, uh, snapple can uh, uh, create several different uh, uh, parts. In uh, uh, pathways or uh, exposed scenarios like uh, ingestion, uh, thermal contact, or direct contact, uh, or uh, inhalations uh, for chemicals when they into the uh, human bodies. So, if there's enough contaminants reach our body, that could be a significant, that could be significant or serious uh, uh, issues. For example, uh, if you look at the uh, BTEX, BTEX is benzene, toluene, uh, ethyl benzene, and silane. 
and uh, TPH fractions, TPH, TPH is total petrol and hydrocarbons, so like uh, aliphatic and uh, aromatic hydrocarbons. <coughs> if those contaminants come into the body, that can do a lot of uh, lot of health problems. So it can affect our organs <coughs> like uh, uh, kidneys and livers, and also they can affect our uh, function of the lungs uh, and to uh, and to our memories. Uh, and can harm to reproductive organs, and also can affect the brain and uh, and nervous system as well. <coughs> and uh, Benzene and ethylbenzene are carcinogenic, so benzene can give you uh, leukemia, and uh, ethylbenzene can cause cancers in uh, kidneys and livers. So, in general, this sort of contaminants, uh, as I said, uh, can create a lot of health issues. That is why we should uh, we should uh, uh, remediate or create or manage the uh, enough. So this is why people should not jump into the uh, oil oil bottle uh, when there is a fire uh, burst to collect some. Uh, Couple of bags of uh, oil to save uh, a couple of uh, hundred of uh, thousands of rupees because uh, you are you are uh, putting your life in danger. <coughs> so, Napal uh, production and distribution. Let's look very briefly about these sort of concepts. Uh, this is showing the first of all in Napal production. This is the uh, primary primary source in the underground storage tank. So, when the contaminant uh, release or when the Napal release. It is sort of like a coming down through the unsaturated zone, and when it hit the uh, groundwater, it's trying to enter into the groundwater. However, it may be uh, uh, going something several centimeters. However, due to the uh, buoyancy force of the uh, water, there is no enough uh, enough force uh, in the body to go into further into the uh, saturated zone. So, as it's invisible, it's not going to mix with the water. Therefore, as shown in here, napal is uh, stay around the water level as a separate uh, napal body. Uh, napal is a complex uh, mixture of uh, uh, chemicals, so depending on the composition of napal and also the uh, uh, physical and uh, <coughs> chemical properties of those chemicals, uh, some of the napal can uh, uh, part mainly to the, uh, uh, some of napal can volatilize into the vapor phase and some of the napal can uh, dissolve into the uh, uh, aqueous phase. <coughs> so that mass transfer created a sort of like a contaminated Vapor phase in the unsaturated zone and the uh, and then we dissolve them uh, in the saturated zone. Uh, in addition to those things, while it's coming through the uh, unsaturated zone and also sort of like a floating around or like a migrating around the water table, uh, some of the napal will stick to the uh, soil particles uh, to create the absorption phase. So at the beginning, we just have a napal, but due to this parchment, now we have uh, four different phases. Uh, 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 like uh, vapor, uh, vapor phase, uh, dissolved phase, absorption phase, and the uh, aromatic phase. <coughs> so this is this make uh, our problem is uh, more complex because initially we had to deal with just one uh, one type of body or like one phase, but now we have a multi-phase system. And also this type of partitioning, as I explained in the previous slide, is uh, giving um, uh, different uh, or like a several different uh, exposed scenarios for chemical uh, coming to the uh, or entering the uh, human bodies. Uh, this picture shows the sort of like a voice scale distribution of NAPA. Uh, basically, trying to show you the uh, sort of uh, how the NAPA exists within the within the uh, within the sort of uh, in, in, in the inside. So this uh, the vertical column is like a cross section of the uh, typical uh, uh, LFL site, and this is the uh, uh, the NAPAL saturation profile uh, uh, along the depth of the uh, site. Here it is uh, sort of like a showing the voice uh, scale schematic how how the NAPAL present with the voice spaces. Now if you just look at it somewhere around here, that may be also and so on. So napal is saturation may be uh, at or near residual uh, saturation. So maybe we have very little uh, water and uh, napal uh, in the pore space. Both are maybe under uh, uh, at uh, uh, residual saturations. Most of the pore space is filled by water. And if you come to certain like a capillary fringe area, there are more uh, napal and uh, napal and uh, water compared to the unsaturated soil, but there are more, still uh, some uh, some uh, in the, in the, in the voice space. 
Now, when you come to the main body of nampers, as you can see here, the saturation of the nampers is quite high. Therefore, uh, most of the uh, void space is filled by, uh, filled by the uh, nampers, and then maybe a little bit of water around the, in the, the void spaces as well. So, if we come into the sort of like a bottom of the nampers uh, sort of like, uh, distribution, the nampers saturation is gradually decreasing. So, maybe we have a little bit of napper. But most of the uh, oysters are filled by the uh, by water. And bottom of the water column, uh, bottom of the saturation, uh, uh, saturation zone, there are no napples, as you can see here, and it's uh, complete uh, oysters are filled by, the, uh, filled by water. Now, understanding of this distribution is important when you are, when you are sort of uh, uh, designing your uh, 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 investigation uh, uh, for, to identify or to assess the uh, napples. As you can see, the presence of NAPA can vary from uh, place to place. So, uh, this distribution, so like the uh, excess of NAPA in the four space, uh, we, need to, we need to understand uh, clearly uh, to, to uh, uh, design an uh, investigation system. <coughs> so, the multiple systems are uh, very quickly, NAPA can uh, exist in any of these uh, four different places. It could be as an NAPA itself, or it could be dissolved into the groundwater. Or it could stick into the uh, soil particles, so it can be a white glass in the first uh, uh, case of the uh, uh, soil gas. Now, if you can remember in the first slides, the in so unsaturated zone, all these four spaces are dispersed. Uh, in saturated zone, we uh, <coughs> have uh, three, uh, three of these spaces as there is no uh, soil gas in the saturated zone. Uh, <coughs> In multiple system, uh, Napa can uh, pass you know, uh, move from one place to uh, one place to the another. The dynamic uh, and the tendency and the dynamic of this mass transfer is uh, controlled by the uh, partial coefficient by the Henry's law constant or uh, absorption experts. The fate of Napa, so the chemicals, uh, is depend or controlled by the, uh, uh, the volatilization, the solutions, uh, absorption, and uh, the uh, degradation process. So again, like if you are uh, uh, designing a degradation system or things like that, uh, or try to manage the ground uh, the nappers, uh, you have to be a little bit familiar with this sort of uh, uh, mass transfer of uh, I'm not going to uh, go into the uh, details here. Anyway, uh, this is these are sort of like a uh, this uh, fate and transfer parameters like density, viscosity, and blah blah blah, and these the permeabilities. Control the network distribution and also migrations. So, if you are if you're going to investigate those things, you have to be familiar with these things, how they are interact and how they can control the uh, network distributions. So, let's uh, look at uh, uh, very briefly uh, uh, the uh, uh, network migration in porous media. So, when we uh, there are, there are three things that uh, control the uh, uh, NFL migration in porous media. It is the uh, subsurface uh, 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 geology and the uh, hydrogeology, and the amount of NAPA release. Uh, and the last one is the uh, physical and chemical surface of uh, NAPA. <coughs> so, when you look at the, uh, uh, the NAPA, the amount of NAPA release, uh, there are two things we have to consider. One is the uh, uh, NAPA saturation. The other one is the uh, NFL gradients. So, uh, when you consider the NFL saturations, uh, the saturation of the NAPL has to be bigger or higher than the uh, uh, residual NAPL saturations. Uh, if, if the saturation of NAPL is uh, uh, below or like uh, smaller than the residual saturation, which kind of uh, will not, uh, will not be, uh, uh, move or move. And it has to be uh, bigger, uh, higher than the uh, the residual saturation. So the next one is the uh, NAPA gradient. So basically, uh, in order for NAPA to move into the, uh, uh, move into, uh, or like a migrate, NAPA has to displace the uh, water in the, uh, and enter into the water at the point space. So, so this sort of like uh, the minimum pressure, uh, the minimum force required to do, to, to, to Displaced the water is called uh, uh, an up uh, point pressure or uh, water displacement uh, pressure. So, NAPA has to overcome this anti pressure. So, the 
driving force uh, provided by the knuckle gradient. So if you have the higher knuckle gradient like here, for example, then uh, knuckle can uh, push the water out and then take the uh, uh, force test and then you can continue with uh, migrate. But due to the migration, it's tied to the knuckle body spread like this, uh, as shown in here. So as a result of that, the gradient is going down. Then uh, there will be some stage, the, uh, the driving force is balanced by the end pressure. So at that stage, the migration of knuckle will cease. So we probably have the uh, high saturation, uh, uh, saturation of knuckle uh, higher than the residual, but uh, as uh, knuckle body can't uh, uh, overcome the uh, entry pressures, uh, it will not move. So again, we have to sort of uh, understand that sort of can sense uh, to, to design your investigations uh, and also <coughs> understand the uh, understand your problem uh, 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 if you have to deal with that sort of uh, situation. Right, and then for remediations. Uh, the remediations is uh, this, this place. So we do remediate only if we have a, a, a risk or if there's a, a active development pollution linkage. If there's no any uh, concern or active pollution uh, linkage, you don't do the remediation. So in the remediation, we are not expecting to get 100% out or uh, the uh, complete zero uh, zero contaminatory system. We are trying to get whatever necessary minimum amount uh, to, make, uh, to mitigate the associated risk. So that is very important to uh, understand when we come to the remediations. Before we go to the remediations, uh, probably uh, <coughs> we have to uh, uh, understand the uh, NFL concern of drivers. So as I said before, we do remediate only if we have a uh, concern or the risk. So if you have a uh, NFL concerns like uh, Possible hazard, surface concentration, vapor concentration, or the respiratory risk, or <coughs> concerns. Then the uh, sort of uh, associated driver uh, for this sort of concern is um, NFL compression. If we change the NFL compression, then probably more likely we can manage this risk uh, as, as we said. And if, if our concern of NAPL is uh, 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 off migrations or visible uh, asterisks, then we have to, uh, then the uh, napal driver is uh, napal saturation. So we have to release the napal saturation in order to this uh, concern. So when you have a problem, so you have to understand this one in order to facilitate your remediation decision making, uh, uh, making process. So this is the basic sort of like a, uh, uh, like a high level or Remediation decision making process. Like as I said, you first you have to first identify and verify your NFL concerns, and then uh, establish your remediation goal and objectives. Now, this setting up or identify your NFL concerns is not uh, straightforward like this because uh, you have to first uh, develop your conceptual site model, the NFL uh, 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 conceptual site model. Uh, in order to do that, you have to do a lot of investigations, uh, and then maybe you have to do the uh, Detail country risk assessment and things like that uh, to get the uh, right picture of your problems, and then you have to find out what is your NFL concerns. Then you can uh, find out, then you determine your remediation goals. Only after that, you can select a uh, remediation strategy to uh, to manage uh, uh, manage the NFL drivers in order to uh, address your NFL uh, concerns. So the last bit is like once you once you selected your uh, remediation strategy, uh, then uh, you have to sort of like come up uh, establish uh, your uh, uh, performance criteria uh, and also like the ex uh, exit strategies uh, to to um, close the close the system. Well, this is looks simple, but there are a lot of things. Uh, you have to control your company's expand and dispense to make for this uh, uh, final, final slides, uh, remediation technology. Uh, these are the sort of uh, common uh, remediation technologies that can be uh, used uh, uh, to, uh, to address the uh, NFL drivers to mitigate the uh, uh, associated NFL uh, concerns. The selection of the remediation uh, uh, technologies can depend on the uh, uh, 
Sarsong Sitiara dan Hadi Jalai Ada pada distribution, ada pada properties, ada pada consignment drivers And regulation of taxes And stakeholders Requirement and constraint And finding the accessory cost and usually in the industry, uh, uh, depending on the problem anyway, uh, people try to do the uh, uh, treatment approach, uh, treatment plan approach. Uh, it is uh, more uh, economical and uh, probably more uh, effective. Uh, what that means is uh, instead of doing a acre quantity from beginning to the end, uh, we can sort of uh, try acre quantity first and then follow up by B and then end up with the uh, technology C. So, so that will be uh, most uh, effective and uh, uh, for experimental uh, system to address our, address our problems. <coughs> uh, yeah, so I think this is this is the uh, sort of uh, end of my presentation and uh, uh, I hope it is it gives some sort of like an idea about the NAPA concept. So I didn't go into the uh, very details, I just uh, I want to Introduce this concept and also uh, sort of outline the fundamental uh, about the NAPA uh, uh, distribution concerns, uh, migrations, and uh, uh, validation process. Um, I think probably we are pretty close to the uh, uh, now. I think so. I'm probably not going to the all my uh, case studies, but uh, before I wrap up the presentation, I'll quickly show you uh, one case study. Uh, this is the former petrol fuel station in England, and uh, the, if you know about uh, England, it is in somewhere around the uh, north uh, northwest in England uh, area called uh, Harlai. Uh, the geology of the site is very made ground clay, uh, clay sands, and uh, fine sands, uh, relatively permeable, and the water level is somewhere around three meters. This is the sort of layout of the site. This is a sort of like an an upper problem or distribution. This, this is the sort of like a uh, problem area. Uh, this picture here showing the uh, the NAPA concern and bio, like uh, uh, the risk. Uh, uh, what is the risk? Uh, we have a potentially a uh, concern about uh, uh, potential migration into the surface water and then the uh, vapor intrusion issues. Because of that, we have to address both uh, NAPA drivers, NAPA compression, and the NAPA uh, saturations. So. Considering, uh, considering all the factors I mentioned in, uh, in my previous slides, uh, air spotting and soil vapor extraction is uh, uh, selected as the uh, uh, most appropriate uh, technology for the site. The spotting uh, spotting is uh, quite robust and quite handy, uh, very effective, very uh, very good, uh, very good uh, immigration technology. So just to briefly outline the outline the uh, process of air spotting. It's basically, uh, we pump uh, or inject the uh, compressed air into the saturated zone and then let it go through the, uh, the surface and the uh, uh, napple body. So, while it's passing through, the napple uh, the contaminant will pass into the gas phase and it's coming down to the zone. So, then using this extraction, we will well, uh, be extracted then and then treated using the about uh, treatment units uh, before installing the uh, gas phase. So, this is the uh, sort of like a uh, sort of uh, this is where we use this, this, the green wells are uh, uh, spot point. So this is the actual picture of the site. And these white leaves, nylon leaves are the uh, spot point. And this uh, red um, red circles are the uh, vapor extraction point, like, like this. And this is the system. This is the compress compressor. And this is the blower. This is the vapor treatment unit. And this is uh, like a manifold to control the uh, injection flow into in the in the ground. So, beginning of the well, when we, the problem was like in the baseline condition, the, uh, the concentration was about uh, 10,000 uh, ppg, and after the month of action on the spotting system, it went down to like 20, 30 uh, ppg. So, so, we managed to uh, uh, address the problem very successfully. Uh, however, as I said before, uh, it could be very costly, and also it's very uh, sometimes challenging. Because if you, if you can see, we are dealing with something we can't see. It's an uh, institute remediation. So maybe we have a few monitoring locations and we have to uh, 
deal with those uh, uh, information we collected from those country mails that we have to do the extrapolation. And also, you know, like maybe like a critical thinking and your experience and your judgment and maybe fact record and all these things. It's a combination of those things. Uh, 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 we, need, we need the combination of those things in order to come up with the uh, right solutions. So that is the tricky bit of the institute remediation because we can't say that we have to rely on the uh, few different uh, uh, marking points. Anyway, so. Uh, um, Maybe uh, before we go to the remediation, the best thing probably we can do is like uh, establish a, a, a set system to protect the uh, or to prevent the uh, damage of the uh, damage to the I think uh, I'll, I'll wrap up my presentation from here. I've got a few questions that I probably not go through. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I'm happy to take a uh, uh, few questions uh, if you have. What's CKD? I don't know. <laughs> it's a chronic disease of unknown something. Right. And then we are in more people have been very various things. Yeah. 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 Uh, is it true with water? Yes. Uh, Everything is known that it is the drinking water that causes the disease. Yeah. Right? But they don't know what causes. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have any, any uh, sort of like, uh, experience dealing with your supplier, like a flight of right? Uh, uh, but I also only uh, had a couple. Um, I think uh, probably it's uh, more common in the dry zones. And, uh, yeah, and dry the so, so I think probably it's maybe. Uh, Maybe like uh, excessive use of fertilizers, uh, like as you uh, as said, uh, we don't know exactly. But uh, I heard sometimes uh, people uh, put their fertilizers into their agriculture well, directly dump into there uh, because it's easy for them to pump it out water and get the fertilizers. I think those are sort of uh, to practice. Uh, anything, uh, uh, anything with uh, more than two part, I think, getting problem. So. Uh, there is no any uh, sort of any experience I haven't I haven't done because we didn't have that sort of problem there. But uh, I, I I have feeling it's uh, maybe because the, uh, the, the 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 flush of the water is probably limited by the rain water that in the dry zones. That's because of that the concentration of this fertilizer whatever it is maybe nitrate phosphate or anything um, has a high concentration. So when the people drink those water or something. Then there's a high, high sort of like a, a load, a kind of a load, I mean, the a human body. Uh, that's maybe the reason not to have a problem in the red zones, but in the dry zones. But I don't know uh, about actual I don't know anything in that side. I have a question that you have because actually mostly about yeah. 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 Uh, mainly focus on the uh, sort of like a, a oil oil reloadant and also the uh, solvents like the denapers. Uh, we we haven't sort of deal with the uh, 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 with the diffuse type of uh, pollutions. So, uh, but but it's a very difficult problem to deal with because uh, it's a wide area, and uh, and also the other thing is with the diffuse bloom, we don't know exactly where the source. You know, it is diffuse and. This will all long period, so that is why it's uh, sometimes very difficult to uh, uh, address that source. And uh, oh, you going back to all this, it's hugely expensive. Um, but you know, sometimes uh, when you have it, when people have some nitrate problems, uh, one of the techniques they're using is the dilutions. So instead of treating all of them, they 
inject pure water and dilute it to bring the concentration down. So if, if you can sort of maintain the uh, uh, concentration, you can minimize the risk. Uh, they are also like basically napple in the beer is the non aqueous based liquid. So basically, they are not going to mix with the water. So it's a uh, stairs, whether it's on the water or below the water, so it's there as a separate, separate body. Uh, the beer napple is they are heavier than water, the only thing is they are going into the circular zone and plus with the other number they can decide to decide what they are around the water. So, so, so examples are like a PC with a tetrapolyethylene, or tricolyethylene, tetrapolyethylene, those are the solvents heavier than water. If they basically say that water, then it's in the uh, it can absolutely get uh, invested in the water or eat the water. Yeah. Uh, it can absolutely get uh, invested in the crust of the earth. Can, it can be a problem. Absolutely. If it is in the practice system, the problem becomes universal. Yeah, it's a good Yeah, because the water I show you is like a just a porous media. So it's just like a single porosity. And it's a non-single. Okay, this needs to come out anyhow. Whatever the patient is, yeah. it can be a little here and it needs to come out. Yeah. And it needs to stay for years. The other one is. Are they just? Yeah. Yeah. And that is interest having control. How long does it take to maintain these chronic spores? Or it's only without being anything in natural accumulation? Yeah. Yeah. Like how much immune failure is it? Yeah. How long does it take to? Uh, I mean, it is, uh, it is very difficult to say exactly. It should take X number of years. But now uh, there's a new technology came for the uh, 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 source on, uh, uh, the uh, uh, natural source on diffusion, if you have that. Right. So it's basically you measure, you estimate the uh, uh, diffusion rate, the like dissolution, volatilization, uh, and based on those rates, then uh, we can estimate, okay, after this X number of years, the parchment is not high enough, the flux, the mass flux coming out of the but it's not deep enough or high enough to get the uh, risk to be. So, if you can monitor that modulation uh, today, the dissolution, and also like uh, uh, the new research came out, uh, they think the uh, validation also within the number of this body is possible. Previously, it's thought that uh, NAPA is toxic to the uh, microbiome. Yes, so now they are thinking it is possible, and because uh, they have found out that some uh, parts work in even in the like 30 years if they have water they can, can be used. So if you can estimate those things, they are not that now it is that's why I said like uh, this technology is keep uh if you only it's very tiny this uh, this technology this concept of natural social media is very recent. Uh in the uh, in the IDRC there's like new new guidance uh, about just about the uh, uh, natural social media just in the post state and then predicted so, if this word uh, red says uh, they are the arena and also within a sort of like a then if I go to the UKD, if the accumulation is something like a one lifetime, uh, lifetime so like 20 plus year, 40 plus year, uh, then you can get into that is fine. So, if, if the first method and method uh, red is very like today. That's fine with the control that it's gone, then and that's fine. That's true. Say it again, say it again. Well, I haven't done the heavy metal, but there usually you can uh, sort of like a People usually change the pH uh, to, to precipitate him in. Uh, so that's probably uh, most of the easily, uh, easily just by changing the pH of the water. Uh, so we have to look at pH and 
your chair and drop the number and then find out what is there, so if I don't like the uh, sort of range, I have to the menu of the The same. Yeah. Team, what? Can I can measure the water and things here. The one I can look at. I'm wrong. Uh, my thing is now in US, they are in a new system called exciting oil, which is called tracking. Yeah. You know, which is just in the crust, in deposits. Yeah. yeah. They have the pressure, they put the pump, high pressure in water into the earth. Yeah. And then this escapes. Yeah. And that is collected. And that's how the total operating parameter is in our head. Yeah. And we don't know. Yeah. I mean, uh, fact and then it's fine. It's, uh, it's completely different. <laughs> so, the yeah. fact is, yeah, so like a uh, new house or like, you know, uh, I think it's a copy, uh, 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 yeah, with the sand and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, so then, yeah, going through and then uh, it's, it's, it's open up and then it's so it's all side of the Yeah, the, if this so sort of. Yeah. 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 Because uh, if you look at it, uh, the um, uh, the the main uh, uh, reason not to do the practice because we have a problem here. It's just about the watch table, around the watch table. So so we are trying to like if you are doing the fracturing, you go deep into the and try to do it. But fracturing here is difficult because then you are opening up the surface. Uh, that may create everything come out and create a bigger problem. Yeah. So so the here is idea is just inject enough for air, and also when you're injecting like it's going to deep, uh, the details, we have to look at what's the over impression and things not to fracture. If you track clear the tractor, then the map will go everywhere. It's like a uncontrolled. So, uh, so when we when we. When you uh, extract the separation. Yeah, so basically when you when you make it with this this technology we inject air and when the air coming through uh, uh, the napper is passing into the gas gas, so then we are ex uh, extracting the uh, content of data, not the napper itself, but the uh content of data. Uh usually using the uh, activated carbon. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, Using accurate carbon uh, before you discharge. I mean, when you're doing this sort of technology, you have to have everything like, you know, like a uh, you know, very high number of the problem which are really. Yeah. So you're reading the right map already. Yeah. Yeah. At the end, yeah. Yeah. So doing the combustion on the on field is for this sort of uh, problems. Very expensive because capital cost is very high. Yeah, yeah. But if you send the used carbon into the region, they already have process. Yeah. 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 The Agricultural Engineering Section Committee uh, of the ESN has uh, arranged uh, uh, Sonia to our guest lecture. So, uh, I invite uh, Dr. Anil Vadubi to the stage and also uh, Chairman of the ESN Section Committee, Mr. Bilakram Mehta, about that uh, Sonia. I invite to deliver the vote of thanks for the Secretary of the Agricultural Engineering Sector of the Committee of the ISL, Dr. Milanti Conan.
behalf of the chairman, Agricultural Plantation Engineering Section at uh, ISN, Engineer Tilakaratna, I express our profound and most sincere gratitude to you for organizing very um, useful this lecture today. Then I wish to thank our guest speaker, Dr. Engineering Anil Vaduge, for presiding uh, uh, over this function and for your enlightening speech. I believe we have all profited <coughs> from your wealth of learning and experience. The lecture has been quite educative. We are all inspired by your great work. We say a very big thanks to you. Then I uh, express my sincere thanks to all the distinguished guests who came on our invitation and grace this occasion. Uh, I take this opportunity to express our profound thanks to Executive Secretary and uh, CEO at the ISL, Engineer Neil Abesekara and other staff members of the ISL for their support in arranging all facilities to make this event a success. Finally, I thank all those who helped us to make this event a success. Thank you very much.